Hi, I'm Philip Pinkle, and today I'm going to give you a short tutorial on how the New Blue Titler Pro works with Edius as a plugin. New Blue Titler Pro is a new plugin for Edius that's just come on the market that expands our ability to be creative in the creation of titles with animation, 3D, and all kind of other fun things. So let's get into it and see how it works. Before I get started, I do want to mention that the New Blue Titler Pro is a version 1 application plugin. That just means it's very new and it's going to grow a lot over the coming days, months, and years. I've been using it for a little bit now and I can tell you that even for a version 1.0 application, it is very robust and gives us a lot of added enhancements and features that we can throw into our projects simply and quickly. So let's get started see how it works. I'm going to create a title real quick and simple. I'm just going to right click, do new clip, and come down to my new blue Titler Pro, and I'm going to slide my interface over so I have a little bit more room to work and I can see my actual timeline as well. As you notice, it's put a title right here on our timeline. It's defaulted to eight seconds. If you know your title is going to be a different length, for my example, I'm going to make mine seven seconds. So I'm just going to come up there, change that to a seven. You can see here, the length of my paragraph for my text has dropped down to seven seconds. It's not showing here yet. When we close and save our title, then this will get bumped back to seven seconds as well. But I'm going to work with a seven second title for this example. I just wanted to show you how that time part works. One thing I want to mention before I get started is all text defaults in Titler Pro to a 3D workspace. That means we can manipulate it in a 3D environment. There's a little globe off to the right here. You can barely see it, but if you click on that, you get a circle around your text, and then you can drag it, you can spin it, you can spin it this way, you can do all kind of crazy stuff. If I were to come over to my style and run the extrusion up a little bit so there's some depth to it, as I spin it, you will see that I now have some depth to my text. I'm not going to go into that a whole lot today because that's beyond the realm of what I want to do to introduce you to the new blue Titler Pro, but I did want to show you that. I'm just going to control Z, get myself back to where I started. Now, let's continue on. First thing I want to do is I want to change my text. I don't obviously want to just say enter text, so I'm going to type double click and enter Kobe drummers since that's what these guys are they're Kobe drummers from Japan now boring white text is usually not real good text so let's do some work to spiff it up and make it a little more interesting if I come over here to the tabs where I have a library and my attributes you can see along the side here that I have different styles already created by new blue that allow me to select a different look for my text. Now one thing to note, these styles actually have some different fonts assigned to them that are much more creative than what you're seeing on my display and the reason is they base the fonts that they used in these particular templates on the fonts that are installed with Microsoft Word. This particular editing machine that I'm using does not have Microsoft Word so it's using default fonts in many cases so they're not quite what they would look like but what they are showing you is the colors, borders, shadows, and those kind of things. I'm going to scroll down and find one that I like, and I happen to like this one called Toothpaste, and I'm going to select that. And so you can see now my Kobe Drummers is now a nice kind of a gradient blue text. The reason I picked that is because the colors closely match some of the colors in my scene. It'll be all color coordinated and really pretty. One other little thing I want to mention about the interface here in New Blue is you've got a library and you've got attributes. The library has all kind of things. It's got effects, it's got templates, it's got transitions, shapes, there's all kind of things buried in this library for you to go and explore and play with. They're already created and set up for you to use and oftentimes they will give you the look, the animation, the transition that you're looking for without doing anything else. So they've done a lot of that work for you. Now if I click on my attributes tab, 
then you see I can change what has already been created with that style. So the library stores all the things that you can do already set up for you easily and the attributes allows you to take what's there or to create your own and essentially go out on the big playground of Tidler Pro and create to your heart's content all kind of neat things. It gives you endless opportunities. For our example, I'm going to change my text a little bit, the layout on it. I'm going to change this gradient. I'm going to click on my upper color and I'm going to lighten that up a little bit. Just pick a little bit lighter blue color. That's good. I'm going to click on the bottom one and just for fun I'm going to make it a little bit bolder or a darker color. Now as you can see it has updated and we now have the new look that we assigned. We could also do extrusion, we can mess with the face. One thing I do want to check is my drop shadow. There is one assigned. I don't want it to be a gradient, I want it to be a colored one. If I mess with my X and Y offset you'll be able to see it change and you can see the shadow actually grow there. I'm just going to set it down to a little bit bigger number than the default of one. Put somewhere around a two just so I have something there that I can show you that I've actually come in and modified what they created to begin with. I want my text to go down and to the right a little bit because I'm going to do something later so that number needs to be in the minus area. Okay so I've got my text set up like I like this is a look that I may want to use again for other things. So here's another neat little feature. Just like in Edius we can save a user preset, we can save our text style. I'm going to come over here and select Save Preset, Save Style Preset. And as you can see, it has a folder created in your My Documents for New Blue Effects where you can save all of your styles and presets for later use. I'm going to come down here and call this one Kobe Drummers. Whoops, left the D out. Okay, so I've saved that style now. If I come over to my library and I go to my styles and open them up and I go to my styles, you can see I've got one here called Kobe Drummer. So let's go back and play with this some more. First thing I want to do is I want to create this text to be a lower third. So obviously it's now considered a center third and we need to move it down to be a lower third. Now there's a couple ways we can drag this text down. Let me show you one little thing that could get you in trouble. If you were to have your text highlighted still from when maybe you were updating it or you were thinking of changing the text, if you have it highlighted and take your little moving arrow and drag it down, you'll see how my text bounding box stays here at the top and my text comes down. If you were to move your text down this way and you were to animate the transition of the text coming on the screen you can get some unwanted results so I'm going to undo that make sure your text is not highlighted you can just grab it and move it down or if you want you can come up here to the Y and move it down as well I'm gonna move it down somewhere along there looks like a pretty good spot for a lower third now we've got our text set up and we like it the next thing I want to do is I want to add a shape on my title for my lower third background. So to do that we can come down here and do an add shape. So if I click and add rectangle look what happens. It actually creates my rectangle right within my text. That's because my text was still highlighted. After pressing control Z to get rid of my mistake I just want to come down to add shape and rectangle. And now we've got a rectangle added independently and you've seen it's created a new paragraph down here and what it also does is creates that paragraph right where my red timeline cursor was positioned. I want this to be the full length so I'm just going to drag this all the way back over to the side and we have it the correct length now. Our background shape is just a square in the middle of the screen. We need to make it bigger. We could scale it with our scale slider or I can just grab the edges and drag it out and that's what I'm going to do. I want it to be bigger than my screen because I want it to fill the whole screen up. I'm also going to take and make it a little shorter so that my Kobe Drummer's text fits in the middle. A little bit better without too much room top and bottom. Now we've got it sized right, let's go in and play with it and create our own look without using the library. Let's just do it ourselves. I don't want a plain white background, that would be like way too boring, so I'm going to click on Gradient. First thing I want to do is select my top color for my gradient 
and I'm going to select this dark red here that's a nice one because it's pretty much close to the same color as what some of these guys are wearing for a shirt and for the bottom color I want to make that instead of a white I want it to be a light gray because I'm going to use opacity and actually make that kind of disappear I make this a little bit bigger because I want to be able to see a little bit more while I'm working there okay so now I've got a nice bar I'm going to use my opacity I'm going to drop that down to around 50 and it will make those grays on the edge get close to almost disappearing they become very opaque I also want to make it where the edges of my gradient are a little more centered it was going top left to lower right but I want it to be a little more centered I still want to keep a little bit of that angle to keep it interesting okay so we've got our bar set up the way we want now let's add a line around it to give it some border if I go up to 3d and outline well this is our default color and that's not a good color and actually I don't want it to be a solid color I want to make it a gradient as well so I'm going to take and pick my top color and I'm going to pick a blue from this guy's shirt so I want to try and pick a blue that is similar in color to his shirt so I've got my top blue and let's make it a gray and this time I actually do want it to keep that same angle that's top left to bottom right because I want the bottom line to sort of disappear off the screen with my bar so we've got our lines up there but you can't really see them so I'm going to increase the thickness a little bit somewhere around a five ish or so looks good alright now let's mess with the opacity let's dial that back down to around that same 50 number that we had on our bar and as you can see we've got our nice line border around it here but down here on the bottom it pretty much disappears that's the look that I'm after next thing I need to do is drag this down so it's under my text except it's not under my text it's over my text we need to fix that to do so we just come down here to our paragraphs and drag our shape layer below our drummers and now our drummers is sitting on top of our background shape all right let's have a little more fun we've got a title and it's just there and for many cases this would probably be very adequate but let's have a little bit of fun just because we can let's take our Kobe drummers and I want to animate those and make them very subtly move to the right to do so I'm going to come up here on my object and I'm going to turn on my keyframing and we're on keyframe one you see it added a little keyframe here off to the left I'm going to drag my cursor down to the end and I'm going to add another keyframe and it's now added a keyframe on the end so I'm positioned at the end so I'm just going to take the X and drag it a little bit to the right so my text will very slowly move to the right I don't want anything drastic or fast I just want it to be simple and smooth so we've got this very subtle movement now left to right with our text okay well the way this is set up it's just gonna bang up here and then drop off and disappear I don't like that I want it to fade in and out so I'm gonna come up to my library transitions and go to my animations and I have one called fade in and the smooth one is the one I like the most so I'm gonna drop that on my shape not my text but my shape you can see it drops it in at a two second default that's too long for me I'm gonna drop it back to around one second so now my background will fade up in one second okay I also want it to fade out when it gets to the end so let's put the same smooth on the end and let's make that about one second as well so now you can see it will fade out now we got a little problem in that our text is already on the screen while it's fading up and down well I'm gonna do something different in a little bit with my text but I don't want it to be on the screen right away because it'll look kinda of funny if my backgrounds not there very well yet so I'm gonna move my text into about a half second I'm gonna make it appear with a different kind of transition but I'm also gonna want it to fade out just like my background does at the end of my lower thirds so I'm gonna put a fade out on the end as you can see when we get to the end of our lower third title it'll all disappear nice and uniformly together now I mentioned we were going to do something different with the fade in or the transition in of our text let's go back to our library 
to our transitions and there's one called shuffling letters that I think is kind of fun And if we highlight them you can see like it did with our text what that transition is going to look like I think I like the slide into place so I'm just going to double click on slide into place and you can see by scrubbing the timeline it's going to take two seconds for them to slide into place I think that's a little too long for my liking I'm going to slide that back down to the vicinity of a second and so now we've got a nice fade up our letters fade in and shuffle themselves around and slide into place and we get to the end and we slide off we've got a pretty nice looking lower third there don't we we could call it done or we could have even more fun with it I think we should have some more fun with it sometimes when you're doing a lower third you want to brand it for your company or for the company you're working for if you're in a broadcast environment you may want to put your station watermark bug down in the corner so let's do something like that I'm going to make sure nothing is selected if I go to file import image I'm going to go to my hard drive where I've got a watermark stored this is the actual watermark for my company frogman productions that I will sometimes put on my video clips so let's play with that a little bit it's obviously too big I'm gonna slide it down because I'm gonna position it over here on the left that's where I want to put it it's a little big so I'm going to take the edges and just drag it down and size it to where it will fit inside my lines of my lower third that's looking pretty good I kinda like the position that's in so now look what happened it put it where my cursor was that's not where we want it in my particular case I'm gonna want my shape coming in with my text so I'm gonna put that right there with my text so now we're going to fade that up so how do we do that we'll come back to our library fading in smooth and we're going to move that back to one second and now it fades in nice and smooth with our text and it hangs there so of course we also need to put a smooth fade out on it as well so it looks good when it fades out now there's one more thing you will sometimes see especially in the broadcast world their little bug may be animated down in the corner so let's animate this as well here's where something new and exciting is coming from new blue and they've just recently been released and they're called GPU effects if I go to my effects you can see I've got animations light effects motion effects starter pack video essentials the starter pack and the animations come with the new blue Tyler but the light effects motion and video essentials are GPU accelerated meaning your graphic processor and your computer is going to speed up the display playback and render times and there happens to be one that I can use on my watermark to give it a drop shadow this is one of the new GPU effects and if I remember right by highlighting them the outline is the one I like so I'm going to double click on that let's position this where we can see it now let's work with this a little bit if I take and move the offset up you can see it move and then if I dial my angle back I want it to go from left to right kind of like the shadow was on the text at the beginning of my project so everything matches let's dial the offset back a little bit and dial that blur down so it's a little bit harder of an edge that's kind of more the look that I wanted on there okay so we've got our watermark and we've got a nice drop shadow on it and it's fading in it looks nice but you know what sometimes you see those on TV and they're animated so let's animate it I'm going to come up to my library and let's use one of the built-in animations there's a turn one that looks like it would work pretty good what's this 80 180 degree look like oh, I think I like that let's just double click on that one and add it so now we've got a 180 degree turn on that so as it opens up and slides we see our watermark then as we get to the end it all disappears as it turns off the screen that's a pretty good looking little lower third we got going there so what have we got here we've got a shape 
that's animated with a drop shadow using the new GPU sped up effects from New Blue. Fades in and fades out. We've got our Kobe drummer shuffling letters to come on and fading out at the end. And we've got our shape with a gradient outline and a gradient background that kind of disappears off the screen when we view it up here. That looks like a pretty good lower third. And you know what? It's also something I may use down the road later in this project. So let's go up and do a file, save as, and I'm going to go to the drive where I've got all my stuff stored. New blue projects. I've got a folder there and I'm going to call this Kobe Drummers. And click Save. And now, when I exit out of here, remember we set this to 7 seconds. This is 8 down here because of the defaults. When I close this, you can see my title has now bounced back and it is indeed 7 seconds long. So now we've got this nice looking title. And it all works just like we wanted it to. It's looking pretty good. Now, for the sake of example, let's go down and say right here, I wanted to add another title very similar to this one because the action has changed in my scene and I want to call it something else. So I'm going to put my cursor there. I'm going to go New Clip, New Blue Titler Pro. And now, if I come over and do File, Open, I go to the directory where all my data is saved and to my projects and I open Kobe Drummers and there we have our project again. If we slide this back over we can now see we've got our project back. All the animation is still there. However, this time I don't want to use the word Kobe Drummers. So here is my paragraph. Let's expand that a little bit so we can see the stuff. Here's my paragraph with the text in it. If I just double click in here, actually I only want to highlight the last word, and I'm going to call this Art Forms because the Kobe drumming is its own art form. And we click out of there, and now when we click X to exit and say yes, I want to save, now my title still works and does everything and says Kobe Art Forms. But if we come back over here, this title still says Kobe Drummers. So I've now created and recreated a second title using that same exact look and all I had to do was change the text in it and I've now got the same look consistently used throughout my project. Now one thing to note, because this is a third party plugin, you don't have the real time playback capabilities that you normally would get with Edius applications. So I'm going to set an in and an out and I'm just going to do a render of my particular title. Now that that's done, we should be able to play our timeline without any problem. And there we go. We've got this beautiful title created and working perfectly for what we wanted to do. That's all for today's tutorial. I hope you learned a little bit and you can see the power and the fun that you can have with the new Blue Titler Pro within Edius. It just adds a whole new level of creativity to what you can do with the title portions of your project. Thanks everybody and have a great day.